Michael Clayton is a 2007 drama by Tony Gilroy. On the surface, it is the story of a fixer who works for a major law firm, finding his way through an ethical dilemma and bringing down a corrupt corporate official. It is in some ways a redemption story. It is also a midlife crisis story. But beneath the surface, there are other themes and ideas that this film is expressing that may not be immediately obvious to the casual viewer, which we will examine here. The most commonly asked question regarding this film is about the scene with the horses and what they symbolize. The horses on the hill are foreshadowed after the fact in the film in the scene where Michael breaks into Arthur's apartment. At one point, he opens the Realm and Conquest book which Arthur has become obsessed with after Michael's son Henry recommends it to him, and we see this clear image of a horse standing near some trees on a hilltop. Now, horses will have many symbolic meanings, and will depend on the basis of interpretation. Since Michael is a character who is having to navigate a difficult and truly dangerous period in his life, I would speculate that a horse in his case would represent how he will face danger and the fact that there are three horses on top of the hill, rather than the one pictured in the book, would indicate that Michael has a choice of how he will face that danger. At this point in the story, Michael has lost his friend Arthur, who has died under suspicious circumstances while preparing a countersuit against the company he was supposed to defend, a company in the film called U North who invests in biotechnology and makes a popular weed killer that causes cancer. Michael is Arthur's best friend, and this turn by Arthur against corporate interests is causing havoc for Michael. And Michael is already in a difficult spot. He's on the line to the mob for $75,000 he's borrowed to open a restaurant with his brother, who's failed to hold up his end of the deal and fallen into cocaine addiction. The company Michael works for is about to be merged with a law firm in the UK, and he's unsure of his future relevancy in the company. He's forced to ask his boss for the money he needs to cover the loan, which makes him look suspicious because of what he knows about the law firm and their clients, being a fixer for many years. Eventually he gets the money he needs, and with Arthur dead and you North suddenly ready to settle the class action lawsuit against them for their cancer-causing weed killer, it seems that Michael is finally freed of all his problems, but not freed from his duty to his conscience. In that, though Arthur was in the midst of a manic episode when he decided to flip sides in the U North case, Michael is forced to agree with Arthur that Arthur is right. U North is guilty of killing people, they're a dirty company and defending them from poor, sick victims of their product is an awful business. So to me, these three horses in this context of facing danger represent these three points. Michael can ride into battle, honoring his dead friend and following his quest. Or he can try to escape, take the money and run, perhaps looking over his shoulder for the rest of his life. Or the third choice, he can find his own path. Ultimately, however, whatever the horses represent to you or I really doesn't matter in this scene. What's important here is that Michael has taken a moment out of his normal life to be present, aware of deeper possibilities, aware of another level of reality that his son was trying to point him to by reading the Realm and Conquest book, by playing the game with him. Stopping and paying attention to that image, confronting it, is what saves Michael from being killed by the hitman's car bomb. Put simply, Michael is saved by listening to Henry, his son, by being able for a moment to see the world like a child. The adult view versus the childlike view is one of the deeper themes of the film. Arthur represents the extreme of taking a childlike view, to the point where his actions become not childlike but childish. So caught up in his own fantasy of helping the farm girl Anna and her family that he becomes blind to the dangerous consequences of what he's doing. 
another deeper theme is the idea of knowing oneself. Not just knowing what you're good at, but what you're not good at. Michael hasn't tried a legal case in years. He would very likely not be able to take Arthur's case to court and have it end well. But he can't just walk away. His conscience won't let him. Michael doesn't throw the people he cares about under the bus. He refuses to give up his drug addict brother to the mob. He refuses to throw Arthur to the wolves in the midst of his breakdown. The one thing he can do is do what he does best, identifying the human buttons he needs to push to clean up a messy situation. Hence the third option, finding his own way. Michael's path is taking down Karen Crowder. He knows exactly the type of person she is when he first meets her, and this is further confirmed by Arthur's suspicious death and the attempt on his own life. Michael can't win Arthur's case for him, and he can't walk away, but he can do something about Karen Crowder. Because in thematic terms, they are both each other's nemesis. Karen Crowder is a sociopath. This is made clear in her introductory reveal in the film, where she is practicing giving answers to what's supposed to be a spontaneous interview. As she practices her responses, at one point the question is, how do you find balance between work and life? And her first revealing response is, who needs balance? Then she corrects it to, there's your balance, when you really enjoy what it is that you do. But as we see in the film, what Karen Crowder does is defend her company's interests, and she's not above having people who get in the way of that murdered, even two in one week. Michael, on the other hand, is presented as a people person, as being humble and caring, as being someone who refuses to step on others to get what he wants, and therefore struggles with success. This is another of the film's deeper themes, that the price of success is dehumanization. You gain the world, but lose your soul in the process. The extreme version of this idea is shown in the emotionless, robotic qualities of the corporate hitmen, and even the silent, morally vacuous character of Don Jeffries. Know thyself. Michael might want greater success, but he knows it's not who he really is, especially in contrast to the successful people he encounters in the film, like Karen Crowder, or the hit-and-run driver in the opening scene. When Michael finally catches Karen Crowder, he leaves the scene in a very symbolic shot descending an escalator down to the street, reinforcing the almost Taoist idea of knowing oneself, and particularly one's place. Michael doesn't really belong to the ivory towers of Madison Avenue. His life isn't defined by his professional success. It's defined by the things he cares about, his family, his friends, and his standing with them that reputation of being an upstanding, honorable man. In a sense, what we call chivalry. And we're back to horses again. And knights. Symbolism and meaning are, of course, open to endless interpretation. I'm not saying the points I've made are all accurate, just that they were the things that stood out to me most in terms of thematic importance. And that's why this series is called The Divergent View. This is Random Rob. Thanks for watching.